what is the worst show you've ever had? And probably like most people, they can call it up just like that. <laughs> I was invited to do an outreach event at a church in Texas. And the, the prior year they had had like the power team who had come and done their, um, you know, feats of strength and of course with loud music. And, you know, that's a, that's a whole different vibe. Right. Than a ventriloquist act. So right away, you know, I had some explaining to do that if they were going to compare what they had last year to what they're getting this year, they have to really recognize that these are two very different things. But what they did was set up a, it was an outdoor event. They set up a, a flatbed trailer as the stage and there were holes in that, which I could deal with that, but you know, like there's, it was rickety. They set it up with a highway, essentially, not <laughs> but, but there was a, you know, like a country highway. In other words, that was traveled <laughs> yep. right behind me. And they had me do my show in the evening just as the sun is going down right there. <laughs> so I had trucks that, oh, and, and it was at an intersection. And so the trucks, of course, using air brake, brakes as they come to the stop sign. <laughs> and, and I'm looking out at the audience and they're all doing this because. Covering their eyes. Yep. Because the sun is right there at the time of my performance, right there in their eyes. It was just really, really bad planning on the part of the of the organizer. And when I got there, I realized that there was this was going to be a problem. And what I really wanted to do was say, okay, we need to move this flatbed truck over to the other side so that the sun will be in my eyes which will be, I'll be fine with that. I'll be well lit. <laughs> <laughs> but at least the sun is not in the audience's eyes. And the, you know, the distraction of the, of the uh, traffic behind me uh, won't be as big a deal. You know, like I, I really wanted to just basically undo and redo everything that they had worked so hard to put together. But there's no way I could do that. Right. You know? Uh, and not only would it make me look prima donna, um, it was just not practical. So uh, that was just a really, really hard show. And it was just exactly what you would expect. It was just like very little audience response. They had, you know, so counted on this being this great outreach event where there's going to be people coming forward like a Billy Graham crusade. <laughs> oh. And they were going backwards. <laughs> well, and it, it's one of those things too. Uh, and even if you had switched the trailer and all of that, it's still outdoors. Right. Which is terrible for, yes. for comedy. Yes. Um, because the sound just goes straight up and it yeah. dissipates and the, yeah you as a performer don't hear it. It messes with your rhythm, messes yeah. with your timing, and you feel like you're not doing well. Yes. The crowd feels like you're not doing well, and whoever's organizing it doesn't hear the big laughter, so they're like, oh, this isn't going well. And even though people are enjoying it, it's, right. it's just not... Outdoors is it's terrible for comedy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so this was not only outdoors, but it had all those other elements to it, compound, add insult to injury, and just compound it. So <laughs> like, this was definitely the worst show ever. <laughs> <laughs> how long of a set? Do you remember how long of a set you had oh, to do? They wanted me to do like a, like an hour. Oh. Uh, and I struggled through and probably got to maybe a 45 minute set. And, you know, you, you start to sense that, okay, we're done. Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, people, with their hands, you know, over their eyes and, you know, you can just feel that 
this was a long enough show. But you feel like such a failure. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they'd done all the expense to get me out there, and, you know, and they talked it up real big. And yeah. And environment makes all the difference in the world for performers, yeah, well, yeah. particularly comedians, like you say. But then you got a guy like me who I'm not even like a stand up comic. Where at least if I was a stand-up comic, I I could take the microphone and I could do crowd work, as you say. Mm -hmm. I could go down into the audience and talk to people and get interaction and see, you know, how are you doing? And, you know, this sort of thing. But as a ventriloquist doing a ventriloquist act, that you don't have that option open to you. It just isn't possible. You get people up on stage with you. Right. But you can't go down and work in the crowd, which is kind of that's about the only thing that might have redeemed that. But for me, it wasn't possible. So, <laughs> From experience, I can tell you that probably wouldn't have redeemed it. <laughs> it, just, it just makes it worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. just see the disappointment on their face up close. <laughs> yeah, up close and personal. Yeah. As they're looking at you going, yeah, no, no, no. Don't come yeah. here. Yeah, we're good. Don't don't talk to me. I don't want to. I don't want to be a part of this. It's and that's such a, a lonely, awful feeling. 